Welcome back, everybody. Moving on to the next question. The movement of a glacier is modeled by the function dt equals 0.02t squared plus 0.6t, where dt is the distance in meters after t days from first measurement. So part A, we have to determine the average rate of change over the first four days. Uh, part B, find the exact instantaneous rate of change at 18 days. And then part C, what does rate of change represent in this situation? So part A, pretty simple. Hopefully you're getting these by now. I just wrote out the answer for you. So during the first four days, average rate of change would be the value of the function at um, day four minus the distance at day zero all over four minus zero. You end up getting 2.72 minus zero over four. And when you do that calculation, you end up getting 0.68 meters per day. So that is the average rate of change over the first four days for the movement of this glacier, 0.68 meters per day. Moving on to part B, they want the exact instantaneous rate of change at 18 days. So because they're asking for the exact instantaneous rate of change, we know the only way to get that is with the difference quotient, algebraically manipulating it. Right? If they just ask for the instantaneous rate of change at the 18 day mark, then depending on your teacher, perhaps they'll just expect you to do it with the difference quotient, but maybe they'll let you do it an easier way with the centered interval, preceding interval, following interval, etc. But those are only approximations. The only way to get the exact instantaneous rate of change like they're asking in this question is with the difference quotient. So that's what we have to do. So the exact instantaneous rate of change at a t value of 18, what would the formula for that be? Well, it would be d 18 plus h minus d of 18 all over h. And what we're gonna have to do is at the end, we're going to have to find this approximation when h is equal to zero. That would give us the exact instantaneous rate of change. But plugging in this zero for h, if you remember, that's going to be at the end of this expression. Once we simplify, we have to get rid of that h in the denominator. So now what I did was I took d of 18 plus h and d of 18 and then figured it out on the side. And the way you do that, d of 18 plus h, you just plug in 18 plus h for the t values in the function that you are given. So 0 0.02 right here, 18 plus h squared, right? I'm plugging in 18 plus h for the t there, plus 0.6 times that t value, in this case, 18 plus h. And then you have to simplify all of this, unfortunately. So 18 plus h squared, that would simplify to 324 plus 36h plus h squared. Remember to FOIL it out. And then we can distribute that 0.6 inside the bracket. So 0.6 times 18 is 10.8. 0 0.6 times h is 0.6h. And then after we FOIL that expression, we could bring in that 0 0.02. Simplify everything, collect like terms, et cetera, et cetera. You end up getting 17.2a plus 1.32h plus 1.02 h squared. And then this expression, d of 18, a lot more simple. You just plug in 18 for t. And when you do that, you end up getting 17.2 a. <clears throat> so taking all of that and plugging it back into our difference quotient, so d of 18 plus h, that is this expression here. So that's going to be 17.28 plus 1.32h plus 0.02h squared. And then we're gonna subtract d of 18, which is 17.28. And then this is still gonna be all over h. Now notice how the 17.28s will cancel out. So we would be left with 1.32h plus 0.02h squared. And what we want to do is then factor out an h from the numerator. So if we factor out the h from the numerator with what's remaining, we would end up with 1.32 plus 0.02h. This would still be all over h. 
Notice now how the H's cancel out. And now we can plug in zero for H because the H is not in the denominator anymore. So those go away. We're left with this expression in the brackets. When we plug in zero for H, we're left with 1.32. And that is the exact instantaneous rate of change at the 18 day mark. And don't forget your units. So the distance is in meters. And the T is in days, so this is 1.32 meters per day. So that's how fast this glacier is moving at the 18 day mark. And then we can actually answer part C um, <clears throat> from that explanation. Basically the rate of change in this situation is how fast the glacier is moving per day. So whether we're finding an average rate of change on an interval or we're finding an exact rate of change at a specific day like we did here in part B, whatever rate of change we're finding, it always represents the movement of the glacier or how fast the glacier is moving per day and it's always in meters per day.